In the last video, we learned about the rendering behavior with respect to parent and child components. We learned that when a parent component renders, React will recursively render all of its child components. And that is sort of the default behavior. I mentioned that rendering is not a bad thing as it is how React knows whether it needs to actually make any changes to the DOM. Towards the end, I also talked about unnecessary renders where the child component goes through the render phase but not the commit phase. In this video, we are going to recap that scenario and I'm going to show you a simple technique to avoid the unnecessary render of a child component. And I'm not talking about memoization. I'm going to begin by creating a new folder called optimization. Within this folder, I'm going to create a new file called parent1.js. For the code, I'm going to copy it from parent.js, so control A, control C, and back in parent1, control V, and I'm going to make the necessary changes. The component name and the lock statement will now be parent1. Also, I just need the one button in this component. So I'm going to remove the other two buttons. So that is our parent one component. Now again, within the optimization folder, I'm going to create a new file called child1.js. For the code, I'm going to copy it from child.js. So copy and paste it and change the component name to child one component and also the log message. Right now, I'm simply duplicating the code, but it is only for the purpose of separation of the topics we are learning in the series. In parent one, make sure to update the import statement to import the child one component. Let's include this component in app.js Save the file and head to the browser. On page load, we have the render message from both the components, which is perfectly fine. If I clear the console and I click on the button and change state, the parent component re-renders. However, the child component also re-renders. The child component goes through the render phase but the render output is ignored since nothing has changed from the previous render. The child component did not make it to the commit phase. So at the moment, we have an unnecessary render for the child component. Let's see how to optimize this rendering behavior. Back in VS Code, in parent one component, I'm going to begin by removing the child one component along with its import statement. In app.js for the parent one component, I'm going to include the child one component as children. So we now have opening and closing parent one component tags and as children include child one component. Make sure to import it at the top. Back in parent one component, we destructure children from props and include it in the JSX. This will effectively render the child one component. Let's save all the files and head to the browser. On page load, we still have the two log statements from the initial render. If I clear the console and I click on the count button, you can see that only the parent one component renders. We have optimized our code to render only the parent one component and not the child one component when there is a state change in the parent component. Of course, at this point, the child one component is more of a prop than a nested component. Let's try to understand 
why this code re-renders only the parent component and not the child component. First, recap what we've learned about the causes for a component to re-render. A component can re-render if it calls a setter function or a dispatch function. A component can also re-render if its parent component rendered. In our first scenario, where we had the child component directly nested in the parent component's JSX, the child component re-rendered when the parent component re-rendered. This is the default behavior in React. To optimize this unnecessary render of the child component, we moved the child component from being invoked in the parent component's JSX to being passed as a prop. It could be any prop, but we chose to use children. Now for the interesting bit. In our component tree, when we call the setter function in the parent component, the component gets flagged for a re-render. React sees that the children prop is part of the JSX. But this children prop references the child one component. Now we all know the fundamentals in React. A component can change its state, but it can never change its props. Taking this into consideration, React will automatically provide us with the optimization. You can picture React going about the re-render in the following way. React looks at optimized parent one component. React sees that it has to convert the button and the children prop to a React element. Now React tells itself, hey, this re-render is caused by a state change in the optimized parent one component. Since this component has no means of directly changing the props it is receiving, I'm sure the children props could not have changed. So instead of going through the render phase for the child one component, I'll simply make use of the React element that was previously created. And that is how React assuring that the children props has to be referencing the same element from the previous render will skip the render phase for the child one component. I hope this makes things clear. Now, if at all the component was re-rendering because of a props change, then the child one component would also have to be re-rendered. Let me quickly demo that. Back in VS Code, I'm going to create a new component called grandparent.js. I'm going to use the snippet RAFC to create a function component. We need a way to change state in this component, so let's add a new count variable. Import use state at the top and then call it within the function. I'm going to call this new count, set new count, and initial value zero. I'm going to add a button to increment the count value. So in the JSX, button, and the text is going to be grandparent count, which renders new count. And on click of this button, we're going to increment the count value. So add a function, set new count, take the previous new count value and increment it by one. Format it and save the file. Now, what we are going to do is include the optimized parent one component and the child one component. So below the button, parent one component and as children, child one component. Make sure to import them both at the top. This time though, we pass in a prop to the parent one component. New count is equal to new count. In app.js, I'm only going to include the grandparent component. 
let's save all the files and head to the browser. On page load, we have the parent one render and the child one render. Now, if we cause parent one component to re-render because of a state change from the same component, React will not re-render the child one component as it is still the same element which couldn't have changed. So if I click on count, only parent one gets re-rendered. However, if I clear the console and if I now click on the grandparent count button, you can see that both the parent one and the child one components are re-rendered. So what happens in this scenario is that grandparent changes its state and causes a re-render. This in turn will cause the parent one component to re-render. React now knows that parent one component is not re-rendering because of its own state change, but rather because of the parent component re-rendering. That means the props could have changed. So React will proceed with the render phase for the child one component, but of course ignores the render output and not commit it to the DOM. I know this was a pretty elaborate explanation, but it is one of the lesser known optimization techniques that I wanted to bring to your attention. With that example, let me quickly summarize this video. In React, when a parent component renders, React will recursively render all of its child components. However, this can lead to unnecessary renders where the child component goes to the render phase, but not the commit phase. So, if you're experiencing performance issues, you can extract the expensive child component and instead pass it down as props to the parent component. In doing so, whenever there is a re-render caused by a change in the state of the parent component, React will automatically optimize the re-render for you by knowing that the props has to be referencing the same element before and after the render. This will also prevent you from having to wrap your components with React Memo everywhere in your project. Speaking of Memo, let's take a look at that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.